Let's work some problems on buoyancy. Buoyancy is the net force that a fluid, like water or air, exerts on a solid that's immersed inside of it. So, as we saw in Archimedes' principle, we can calculate the buoyant force fairly easily just by asking how much does the fluid that I've displaced by the solid weigh. All right, so let's work some simple problems to begin with. Find the buoyant force on 2 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic meters of iron that's immersed in water. Now, notice that it doesn't tell me what this 2 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic meters tells me about the iron, but because it's got a unit, I immediately know that's got to be the volume. So, we'll go ahead and use Archimedes' principle, F buoyant equals density of the fluid, volume displaced, times the acceleration due to gravity. Now, the density of the fluid, it's water. So, I know the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So, we'll go ahead and write that. The volume displaced, well, geez, that's 2 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic meters. And remember, I know that immediately just from the unit. The teacher can't avoid giving you a unit because otherwise it'd be wrong, right? So, we can always use that uh, key to tell us what this piece of information is. And then I got to multiply by the acceleration due to gravity, which of course is 9.8 meters per second squared. And when I multiply all those things out, it will give me the buoyant force 1.96 newtons. Okay? Notice newtons, not kilograms, is the unit of force. All right, let's go to the next one. Find the buoyant force on 20 kilograms of iron immersed in water. All right, I'm going to do this the same way, but I run into a problem immediately. I need the amount of volume that's displaced. But I don't know that. They didn't give me the volume. They gave me, well, let's see, it's kilograms. So that means they gave me mass. All right, I know the mass and I know it's iron. So, I can look up the density of iron and relate the mass to the volume using that physical quantity. All right? And you will be expected to do this. You'll have a table somewhere in your book that will give you a bunch of densities. You could always just look at that table and see what's the density of iron. Well, it turns out that the density of iron, which is mass divided by volume, is 7,874 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay? So then I'll go ahead and I'll solve for the volume by swapping these two. So I'll have volume equals mass, 20 kilograms, divided by density, 7874 kilograms per cubic meter. And when you work out that value, you'll get 2.54 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters. And now it just becomes like number 1. So I'm not going to go through all that. The answer is 24.892 newtons. All right, so pretty good, pretty good. Let's see what happens when they give us another piece of information. So over here, it's asking for the buoyant force on 75 newtons of copper immersed in water. All right, 75 newtons. Again, we're going to use the unit to determine what piece of information the problem is giving us. Newtons is a force. And so since they've told us that this piece of copper is 75 newtons, that means that its weight is 75 newtons. Now, of course, we could turn that into the mass by dividing by 9.8 meters per second squared and then turn it into problem number two and then do all that business and turn it into problem number one again. But that seems like a lot of work and I'm tired. I don't want to do that much work. So let's do it a different way. It turns out that there's a wonderful property of buoyant forces that we can use whenever the object is completely submerged in the fluid. All right? So let's just look and see how we get this. F buoyant 
I'm not going to calculate this directly because I know how it's going to go. And after you watch it, you'll know how it's going to go too. I'm going to calculate the ratio of the buoyant force to the whole weight. Now watch how this works because it's really neat. The buoyant force is the density of the fluid times the volume displaced times the acceleration due to gravity. What's the weight? Well, the weight is the whole mass times the acceleration due to gravity. But the whole mass is the density of the solid times the volume of the solid times the acceleration due to gravity. Now, the wonderful thing is, of course, the acceleration due to gravity cancels. But if it's completely immersed, the volumes cancel too. And so that gives me this wonderful fact that the ratio of buoyant force to total weight is just the ratio of the densities, which is beautiful. Because then I'll just fill in the densities. 1,000 for water. For copper, it's 8,960, I think. Yep, 8,960. And now, all I need to do to get the buoyant force is just multiply by the weight. F buoyant equals 1,000 over 8,960 times 75 newtons. And when we carry through that multiplication, we end up with 8.37 newtons, which is wonderful. It was quick. There was very little opportunity for us to make a mistake, which is, of course, not the case if we were to go back through all that business in problems one and, problems, and problem two. And it just gives us the answer immediately. Very, very, very nice. All right, let's do this last one. This last one is actually associated with what Archimedes originally used buoyancy to determine. So a king, for example, would give him a crown and would ask him, what is it made of? Is this pure gold? Is this pure silver? And what Archimedes would do is he would weigh the crown in air and he would also weigh it when it was immersed in water. And he would look at that difference to determine what the density is. All right, let's see how this goes. So, when I'm weighing it in air, I have 35 newtons and then the weight. So if it's in equilibrium, then the weight is 35 newtons. All right, easy enough. When I'm weighing it in water, I have a buoyant force. I have its weight in water, which we said was 32 newtons. And then I have its actual weight, which we already determined was 35 newtons. All right. So that means that the buoyant force must make up the difference between the weight in water and the weight in air. So the buoyant force must be three newtons. F buoyant equals three newtons. And now we're going to use our ratio result from number three. If we divide by the weight, 35 newtons, then that will give us the ratio of the densities. Density of the fluid divided by density of the solid. So then again, we'll solve for the density of the solid, and it'll give us density of the solid equals 35 over 3 density of the fluid. And when we plug in all the numbers, we end up with 11,670 kilograms per cubic meter. Now that's pretty close to the density of lead. So I'm sorry, King, your crown isn't made of gold. All right, that's buoyancy.